Hi, this is Annie Grace. I hope everybody is doing great. I'm answering readers' questions, and this question came in. It says, um, and sorry, I have a new puppy who's obviously going to make a lot of noise during this. <laughs> so that's but but anyway, this question says, first of all, hi Annie, I would like you to know that I'm so happy I found you. I remember researching online when I finally decided I wanted to rid alcohol from my life. I stumbled across your book, your podcast, the alcohol experiment, which I successfully completed, and it's been exactly 68 days now, alcohol free. Yay! I struggled for such a long time with really bad anxiety and depression. The anxiety came out in certain ways that were obvious, as well as otherwise I didn't even realize it my whole life how bad and crippling it was for me, especially in social situations. The anxiety, depression, and OCD shifted, and I realized that alcohol was such a major factor. So I'm so happy to have that behind me. One question and concern I have not heard addressed yet since I've been taking this very seriously and I'm committed to really not touching alcohol again. I don't miss it and I've gone out to dinner and family functions a few times now and I feel like I'm overcoming that urge and addiction. One day my brother and sister-in-law had me over for dinner. They made a delicious chili. Later I asked him how it was made and he told me there was beer in the chili. This probably sounds silly, but I had a little freak out moment internally thinking, did I just set myself back by putting alcohol in my system? Or is it so minimal that I'm now having anxiety about the fear of having alcohol? I also love to bake and realize there's lots of recipes I would try for the holidays that involve using bourbons or wine. So I guess I'm just wondering if this is ever mentioned by anyone else and if you could offer advice on how to approach alcohol and food situations. Thanks again for all you do. So. This is such a great question. Um, I believe that, first of all, I don't necessarily believe in like black or white rules. I think this is really person by person, like uh, circumstantial and specific to who you are and what you want for your life. So I really think that this has to do with how it makes you feel and how it makes you like act and, and the thoughts that come in. So for instance, let me give you an example. If, if putting, you know, knowing you ate chili with alcohol is not something you can make peace with because you really want to just distance yourself from it. And you should listen to that. You should listen to that within yourself. But equally, like there's a lot of um, in interesting things about cooking with alcohol that the alcohol actually cooks off. Um, because as you know, like if you were going to do a flambe and you're actually going to burn it, the part that's alcoholic burns off and leaves the flavor. So like bananas foster or something has the flavor of the malt which is not actually the ethanol part, but the ethanol part has burned off. So something like chili with beer, there's, I don't think any alcohol content in it anymore. This is what I've heard. I don't know this definitively, but I'm 99% sure that that's true when you're cooking a food. Now something different like putting bourbon in tiramisu, for example, is going to be where um, you're not cooking it. It's a, it's a cold thing. So there would still be a, a trace of alcohol in it, depending, I think it's like maybe a few tablespoons of bourbon for the entire pan of tiramisu. So it's relatively minimal. You know, it's similar to taking a tincture. A lot of tinctures have alcohol in them. And so you're taking a few drops of that tincture and in order to deliver the herb or the medicine, whatever it is, there's alcohol as a delivery mechanism. You know, equally hand sanitizer is alcohol. And as we know, we're using that all the time. Now we're not putting it into our body, but we are certainly using it on our body. And there's probably some level of absorption. Um, for me personally, like this is a non-issue. Like I would, I would eat tiramisu. I would um, eat the chili. I would uh, cook with the wine. Um, there's one fondue recipe my husband and I make, and it calls for a quarter of a cup of, of like brute champagne that we really like. We make it every New Year's Eve. And um, yeah, we would absolutely make that. I would also though, at the early days for me, because I just knew that I didn't want to mess with anything, I would pour that quarter of a cup in the fondue pot and then I pour it immediately down the drain. And that was just for me. That was my own peace of mind. That's what I wanted to do. Um, now that's not that big of a deal, but it doesn't keep anyways. I'm not drinking it. He's not drinking it. I don't want the kids to drink it. So I just would would pour it down the drain and just make sure that I wasn't going to be like tempted later. And um, I think again, I wish, no, I don't wish. I, I was going to say that I wish there was like these black and white, like do this, do that. But I actually don't wish that. I think that we're so much better served by listening to our inner guidance, by trusting ourselves, by saying, hey, you know, if I don't trust myself to buy, you know, a six pack of beer so that I can put a few in the chili and then have the four in the refrigerator, I'm not going to do that. But equally, if I do, I'm not going to find anything wrong with that. And so I'm really going to be led by my own guidance. This is another thing that comes up with drinks like kombucha. Um, now there's lots of hard kombuchas that you actually have to look out for because they are alcoholic drinks. But there were lots of kombuchas before that just had trace amounts of alcohol. 
you know, not enough to get you drunk or tipsy, but some people would swear they would never do that because it would make them feel like just even the taste. You know, there's also people who won't drink non-alcoholic beer because they feel it's triggering for them. It makes them want actual beer. And so I think that this is so best served by you listening to your inner guidance and your heart and realizing that, you know, like absolutely it's not breaking a streak or doing anything like that. And the truth is there's probably alcohol. I've heard there's alcohol content, you know, acidic in orange juice. I don't know if that's true, but there's probably is some fermentation. Even if you were to eat fruit that has gone a little bit ripe, there's probably some fermentation. So it is probably almost impossible to avoid it altogether. But I think for me, the line is, okay, what am I doing here? Is this for taste and flavor or is this to get myself intoxicated and escape something and to feel a certain way or to try and chase, you know, that feeling that I would always have um, that I was continually chasing as I was drinking. So anyway, it's not a black and white answer, but those are my thoughts about food and drinking. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day.